Hello viewers, in this session we will learn about our Parthasarathi's poem Exile which is an extract from a long poem named Rough Passage. In this session we will learn to summarize and interpret the poem. We will also know the thematic concerns and literary approaches to the poem. We will also learn cultural conflict in Indian writing in English with special reference to R. Parthasarathi. The poem Exile which is written by R. Parthasarathi is one of the three sections of a long poem rough passage written during a period of 20 years. The poem reveals Parthasarathi's cultural dilemma and the issue of language and identity. The first section of exile explains the colonial past of the nation using the poet's personal past. The poet also expresses cultural dilemma which opposes the European culture and examines the effects of British rule on an Indian, especially losing his identity altogether with his culture. The poet expresses his predicament in England where he feels isolated and alienated. The poet takes an introspective journey right into his personal and cultural conflict between the British and Indian values. Rajagopal Parthasarathi was born in 1934 at Tirupadrai Thirai near Tiruchirapalli in Tamil Nadu. He was educated at Don Bosco High School and Siddharth College, Mumbai and at Leeds University, United Kingdom where he was a British Council Scholar in 1963-64. He was a lecturer in English literature in Mumbai for 10 years before joining Oxford University Press in 1971 as regional editor in Chennai. He then moved to New Delhi in 1978. Presently, he is working as an associate professor of English at Asian Studies at Skidmore College in Saratoga Springs, New York, USA. His works include Poetry from Leeds in 1968, Rough Passage brought out by Oxford University Press in 1977. He edited 10 20th century Indian poets published by Oxford University Press in 1976 which went into 16 impressions by 2002. His translation into modern English verse of the 5th century Tamil epic, The Tale of the Anklet, an epic of South India, was brought out by Columbia University Press in 1993. It has received significant awards including the Sahitya Academy Translation Prize in 1995 and the Association for Asian Studies A.K. Ramanujan Book Prize for Translation in 1996. Our Parthasarathi is one of the poets who cultivate an extreme austerity in style. He is probably the most successful poet in modern Indian English poetry. The First Step Poems 1956-66 is his poetic collection. His best poems reveal an uncommon talent and a sensibility that deliberately puts shackles on itself. His most ambitious effort is towards an understanding of Indian culture. He is a conscientious artist 
with a meticulous aesthetic taste. His poetry is the articulation of his predicament of an exile which has alienated him from his culture. His poetry is an intense search for identity, a search for the roots in his nature, culture, environment and language. The search is realized by an objective probing of personal as well as momentous past. Our Parthasarathi's rough passage is a long poem which has a three tire structure. It has three sections comprising three different poems, exile, trial and homecoming. The poet expresses his cultural conflict which is the core of his poetry. As a young student, he went to England and was infatuated with British life and English language. But his life in England put an end to all his Anglomania and he was caught in a cultural dilemma which is strongly reflected in this poem. In the first section titled Exile, the poet describes his life and experiences in England where he felt isolated and alienated from his culture and civilization. It also reveals the poet's infatuation with English language and British culture. As long as the poet was in the British atmosphere, he found it totally degenerated and felt alienated from his Tamil roots in India. The poet's present concern with English language and his native language Tamil initiated a cultural dilemma in his mind. He gives some clues related to his own cultural discrimination. In exile, Parthasarathi gains new insight into his colonial identity and learns the anguish of being born too late to affect the lives of the colonizers and the colonized. Here we find the recurrent themes like the theme of language and the theme of colonial alienation. The colonial linguistic dilemma has turned him to the study of Sanskrit and his mother tongue Tamil. In the second section, Trial, Parthasarathi celebrates love and human relationship. In England, he had no relationship and emotional bond with anyone. But when he came back to his motherland, he has attained everything that he lost and formed new bonds of love with his own people. Love is a reality in India, whereas an illusion in England. His momentary look at the family album fills him with nostalgic memories. Love and concern of the members of his family gives him a sense of belonging and makes him realize that there is no place in this world like home. In the third section, Homecoming, he gives expression to his joy of discovery when he discovers his native roots and tries to harmonize the English language with Tamil culture. He is in an ecstatic mood, though his ecstasy is tinged with regret. He expresses his joy when he comes back to his cultural heritage. Here goes exile from rough passage. As a man approaches 30, he may take stock of himself, not 
that anything important happens. At 30, the mud will have settled. You see yourself in a mirror. Perhaps refuse the image as yours. Makes no difference unless you overtake yourself. Pause for breath. Time gave you distance. You see little else. You stir and the mirror dissolves. Experience does not always make for knowledge. You make the same mistakes. Do the same things over again. The woman you may have loved, you never married these many years. You want yourself at her hands. The luminous pebbles of her body stayed your feet, else you had overflowed. The banks never reached shore. The sides of the river swell with the least pressure of a toes. All night your hand has rested on her left breast. In the morning when she is gone, you will be alone like the stone benches in the park and would have forgotten her whispers in the noises of the city. Let's look into the structure of the poem. Our Parthasarthi's rough passage is a long poem which has a tripartite structure with triads as expressive prosodic units. It is a composition of 38 sequences which are presented within three sections exile, trial and homecoming. The dominant voice in every section includes the dialogue between the poet's consciousness or mind and the inner self. Our Parthasarathi himself writes about the structure of the poem. Rough Passage is a book where all the poems form part of a single poem as if it were in it 20 years writing has finally settled. The prosodic form is a triad, a stanza of three long and short lines that approximate to the rhythm of speech of prose. The stanza itself actively enters into the rhythmic structure. It connects, holds over or looks ahead and thus establishes overall unity. Each section as a result flows into the next and helps the poem to move forward to its destined end. Thus, it is easy for the readers to believe that the structure of the poem is consciously and carefully thought out design. The poet himself is the narrator of the poem. He narrates his experience of isolation in England and his introspective exile, trials and homecoming. The poet expresses his real life experiences in the poem. His use of language is spare and unmotivated. The poem develops in a series of verse sentences which make a little use of cadence, rhyme or melody. The strength of his poetry lies almost entirely in its visual juxtapositions and startling image. His lines do not sing. He cultivates the deliberate prosaic style, an undertone of rhythm itself. So, his poems become memorable not only for individual images themselves but also occasionally the prose ignites no metaphor and it is almost purely descriptive. Exile constitutes as one of the three sections in rough passage. The deliberately designed structure of the poem 
helps the poet to express the three stages of his intellectual and emotional development. Exile places the culture of Europe against that of India and deals with the loss of identity of the poet with his own culture, language and civilization. The other two which have indicative titles are Trial and Homecoming. The poem begins with a search for roots and one's identity. The narrator tells us about a grown up man who approaches 30 and has so many things to his credit. The life that he lived in England has taught him a lesson and the experiences that he has had during his stay there have compelled him to differentiate between what he has left behind and what he possesses in the present. Life in England has been a struggle and conflict between England values versus Indian or Tamil values. He has been pursuing something which is not his own and cannot be at all. The influence of time on an individual is natural and no one can spurn it. The narrator who is quite mature now realizes the difference between the past and the present. His association with India and its heritage makes him feel isolated in England. The consciousness of the past and his Indian origin disturbs him at every stage and makes him restless and anxious. He recollects from the past and tries a solution for a better present and future. It is he who can change his life and stop chasing something unproductive. The poet translates the colonial past of his motherland using his personal nostalgic feelings. He opposes the culture of Europe with Asia and examines the effects of British rule with reference to an Indian who is especially losing his identity along with his own culture. In the next expression, the narrator tells us about his association with English language and British culture. Since childhood, he learned English and adopted almost everything as if it is the best in the world. But now he is disappointed and disillusioned. He realizes the difference between something of his own and that of others. In the next expression, the narrator expresses his predicament and sense of isolation in England where he seems to be like fish out of water. In the course of time, the boldness in Tamil language has vanished and all started following English as a means of communication. This shows the narrator's personal crisis since he realized that the foreign experience has been harmful to his self having its perpetual effects. The poet writes, the banks never reached shore, the sides of the river swell with the least pressure of her toes. In the last two trites, the poet seems to be expressing an evening scene between a man and a woman, but his expressions points out something different. He writes, all night your hand has rested on her left breast in the morning when she is gone. Here the lady stands for English language, which was served by him for long 
but she could never be his own. On the contrary, the language that he really loves may be the native language Tamil and he returns to the native language after his infatuation with English. The protagonist accepts Indian and British cultures but his experience with the two opposite cultures compelled him to compare and contrast both in order to make the best choice. In the last thread, the poet expresses his isolation and alienation. He writes, you will be alone like the stone benches in the park and you would have forgotten her whispers in the noises of the city. The exile or isolation in this expression is really a self-enforced one. Its value is based on the way it leads the protagonist to understand through his experiences of exile and loss of identity in the foreign land. Though he has wasted his youth, he resolves to hold this newly discovered knowledge in the noises of the city. His passion for the mother tongue helps him to start once again at the age of 30. With this new love for the native language and consciences of the past, the poet moves from the first stage of exile to the second stage of trial. The second section trial, the poet celebrates love that passes through turmoil and nevertheless gives him a sense of belonging. The third section, homecoming, is an attempt to reconcile his urban self with his Tamil roots. Parthasarathi begins with an infatuation for English and British life and ends with his homecoming. However, his visit to England was a complete disillusionment. The tension in this poem lies in this cultural dilemma caused by his expectations, disappointments and awareness of the loss of identity with his own language, culture and civilization. He introduces surprising images and metaphors and his imagination endows them with symbolic and universal significance. Let's now look into the themes. The theme of identity is a recurrent and dominating one in the first section of the poem Rough Passage. The narrator is introspective of his belonging to language, culture, country and so on. He went to England to study and adopted English language and British culture so as to cope up with the atmosphere there. When he reached the age of 30, he realized that he was missing something which was his origin and permanent belonging. His realization of his link with his mother tongue and culture makes him restless and anxious. He becomes nostalgic and keeps thinking about Tamil culture, language, the members of his family and his own people etc. Throughout the poem, the poet narrator makes an attempt to find his real identity. Being in a foreign land itself is sufficient to make an individual feel isolated and alienated from his family and society and also language, culture, country and so on. In this poem, the poet narrator becomes conscious of the purpose of learning English and his visit to England. His introspective mind makes him aware of the loss of identity 
and his isolation from his origins. He adopted English and British life, which is not his own and cannot satisfy at all. His association with the British language and England has brought him to a pathetic situation where he is totally shattered and alone with disillusionment and disappointment. Being there in England for some time could not make him an Englishman and he could not remain a complete Indian. This cultural consciousness makes him learn Tamil and come back to India in search of his origin. The theme of language is the major theme of the poem. The narrator gives us an account of his experience and life in England. We are also informed about the incidents in the past and purpose of going to England as a student. His infatuation with English as a language is obvious since he has to live there in a British environment. He learns the language for his livelihood and bright career. But in due course, he lost touch with his mother tongue, Tamil. His awareness of the fact makes this poem filled with the theme of language. He becomes aware of his existence as an Indian and a Tamil in particular. He is isolated from his language, family, society and culture and so on and wants to regain the lost glory. Cultural dilemma is the essence of this poem. Parthasarathy consistently declared that his poem has cultural dilemma as the fundamental concept. His experience of the British predicament versus Indian values has always dominated him during his stay in England. The comparison between both the cultures initiated the dilemma which involved him for a longer period of time till he chooses between the two. Parthasarathi's treatment of the theme of regionalism is a peculiar case study. The elements of regionalism cannot be found directly. The poet seems to speak about Indian culture only obliquely. He only refers to Tamil language, culture and his personal sense of belonging. This makes the poem acquire elements of regionalism. I hope you have enjoyed our Parthasarathi's poem, Exile. His poetry expresses a sense of nostalgia. His comments on his country are half ironic and he frequently indulges in self-satire. There is a depression combined with introspection which is visible in his poems. Parthasarathi is a complete craftsman who possesses a highly perceptive and rational sense of language. I hope you all have enjoyed this session of the poem Exile which is an extract from Rough Passage written by Parthasarathi. Thank you.